Thank you. Please be seated. We'll back, go back on the record in the matter of State of Utah versus Martin Joseph McNeil. Mr. McNeil is present with his counsel. The state's attorneys are present and the jury is seated. Uh, Ms. I'm sorry. Moore. Moore. Thank you. If you'll uh, retake the witness stand, you remain under oath. So Hello. I just want to make a record. Were you? Did you uh, take the oath? Were you sworn? Is yes. that your recollection? It is. Very good. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, Ms. Moore, where do you work? Um, I do not work at the time. I'm retired. Okay. And where did you work in 2007? At the Utah State Developmental Center. In what capacity? Um, I was housekeeping supervisor. And what were uh, what duties did your job entail? Um, I I was over the housekeeping department um, as well as supervising them and giving them training. Okay. And so we there's a number of individuals or patients who are taking care of at the developmental center, and you change sheet well you were in charge of the people that would change sheets and general housekeeping I was actually over the non direct care areas which was the medical areas um, all the programming areas um, the canteen area all the non direct care areas okay in um, covering those areas did you have occasion to interact with Martin McNeil yes I did okay and um, is that person in court today Yes, he is. Will you identify him? He's right there on the left in the black suit. I'd ask that the court have the record reflect she's identified the defendant. It will so reflect. Go ahead. Um, how did you interact with him when uh, you were working at the Developmental Center and so was he? Um, well, one of the areas we did claim was medical and he was in the medical area. And I also had my office in the medical supply room where a lot of the nurses and the do doctors would have to come in and get medical supplies. Did he have supervisory authority over you? No, he did not. Okay, so your interaction with him would be in performing your duties or supervising the people underneath you? Yes. Um, and so you had somewhat of a working relationship with him? Um, yes, if he needed anything claimed um, in his area or anything, he may talk to me about it or something like that. But other than that, I had a supervisor over me, and then I had janitors under me. Um, but other than that, um, he may see me cleaning. Um, I know when I would clean. Sometimes I had to come up during the day. Um, sometimes I was there at night. I seen him there at night. I seen him there during the day. So in, in when you would see him, would the two of you interact and converse at times? Yes. We're friendly to each other? Yes. Uh, do you remember the date of April 11th of 2007? Yes, I do. Did you interact with the defendant on that date? Um, yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, I ran into Martin in the hallway outside of medical. Um, he was on his way over to the safety fair, safety fair, and he seemed to me to be very hurried um, to get over the safety fair. He, in fact, he told me he was going over to the safety fair, and he was in a hurry to get over there. Um, and he did seem very anxious and in a hurry, which I did not understand because it went until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Now, you have, you, prior to this time, you had interacted with him on a number of occasions. Yes. This um, hurriedness or anxiety that you've just described, is that how he normally was? No, he was usually very calm and um, would have time to talk. I mean, he didn't seem hurried 
like he was that day. He seemed like he, he was very hurried that day to get over to the safety fair. And he told you, I've got to get to the safety fair. Yes, and was really in a hurry. Can I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked as. This is State's Exhibit 34. Let me show this to you. Do you recognize what this is a photo of? Previous testimony that this is an aerial photo of the developmental center. Okay, yeah, I can see that now. Can you see where different buildings and such are located? Yes. Um, how long did you work there? 32 years. So you're quite familiar with this location? Yes. Okay. Um, it just looks a little different when you look down on it that way. I'm going to act as the easel. Would you come down here and point out some things for the jury for us? Where was your office located here? Well, the times being there, I was there several different areas. Let's say in 2007. Okay. Um, okay. This is the Cottonwood, Aspen, and, and a few areas I would take. I'm going to move you over a little bit so we can have this visible to the jury as you point these things out. Um, it's hard for me to look at it down that way. Um, Let me ask you where the defendant's office was. Of yeah. course, this picture. Yes. Where was that? Um, Your Honor, may I approach? It was right on the back of the medical area. I was just down the hallway. I'm trying to think where. Um, this is very, very hard for me to. Where, where would the. I worked there 30 years I apologize, I recognize this is a new way of looking at it. Yes, it really is the tops of the building like that. Um, I would think this is the. Um, My office should come in kind of an area like this. Where, which building is this? The, um, they would have this building. And he would probably know this map better of the facility. Okay. Um, You're fine. Why don't you, why don't you take a seat? Um, okay. What I'm trying to get to, and you can just tell us, where was it that you interacted with the defendant when he told you he had to get to the safety fair? Um, Right outside of the medical area. Um, his office was right in medical. Um, and we was outside in the hallway. Uh, and there's some double doors, um, which open and shut. And we was probably a little bit too by the pharmacy area. Um, and. He had come out from where his office is at. There's a little waiting, waiting area. And he had come out from there, but like he was in a hurry. And we kind of met right there. And he went out the double doors and the, and the um, safety fair was over to the, he in the Heather building. So he was going towards the Heather building? Yes. Um, did you later hear of the defendant's wife passing away? Yes, I did later that um, uh, day. It was probably mm, probably one around one o'clock or so that I heard about his wife's passing. Um, did you interact with the defendant after the day of his wife's passing? Not um, the day of his wife's passing. I did not interact with him. 
My question is, did you interact with him after the day of his wife's passing? Yes, I did. Um, I believe it was the Monday when he came back to, to work. And um, it was after the funeral. I did not go to the funeral, but it was, um, I think, the Monday after his wife had, uh, after the funeral. I ran into him in the hallway down by my office, um, which is not too far from medical e either. It's more down by the dental area. And I ran into him, and I, I just said, I'm sorry about your wife's passing. And he said, e everything will be fine. Everything's just fine. And he, he seemed happy to me. I mean, he, he was just fine. He seemed happy. And this was the Monday following his wife's passing away? Yes, after the funeral. And I thought he'd still be gone. I, he just, he seemed fine. He was actually happy. Thank you. Next up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. When um, you saw Mr. McNeil at the developmental center, fair to say that he typically wore his, his white lab coat with the cursive writing on it? Not always. I, he didn't always wear that. You wore it often? Mm, I wouldn't say often, sometimes. And do you recall him wearing it on, on uh, April 11th when you met him in the hall? Yes, he had it on that day. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Nothing further? No. Any questions for Ms. Moore? May she be released from her subpoena? Um, we would like to keep her under a subpoena, Your Honor. Okay. You'll remain under your trial subpoena. If you're needed back, you'll receive notice. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Next. They calls John David Laycock. Mr. Laycock, if you'll come up here to the clerk's desk, please raise your right hand and take an oath. Do you solemnly swear that testimony you shall give in the case now pending before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and the truth of the truth and the truth of God? Thank you. If you'll be seated here, please. Will you please <clears throat> state and spell your name for the record? My name is David Laycock. It's L-A-Y-C-O-C-K. And David is your middle name? Absolutely. My first name is John, J-O-N. So it's John David Laycock. You go by David. Correct. And how were you employed? I work for the state of Utah um, in the Human Resources Department. Um, how were you employed in 2007? Um, I worked for the developmental center at the developmental center as a human resource manager. In American Port? Correct. And how long did you work at the developmental center? I worked for the developmental center for 26 years. And in what capacity there? Um, for the last 18 of those years was a human resource manager. Okay. Um, do you know the defendant? I do. Martin McNeil. And you know him from working there? He was hired in 2000, um, in 2000 as a physician for the developmental center. Were you involved with that hiring? I was not involved with it other than processing the paperwork. Do you remember that time when he was hired? I do. And he was hired into what position? As a physician um, with the developmental center. Um, I think it was a director of, of the medical. So it appears you worked with him for how long? How many years? I worked with Martin McNeil for seven years, from 2000 to 2007. Um, while you worked with him, were you aware of any health problems that he had? 
Um, I was aware of two, two issues that he brought to my attention. Um, he told you about these things? Yes. Okay. And, and when and where did he explain these to you? Well, uh, I worked as in management, he worked in management, so we're always, you know, in different meetings, same meetings, and so, but during that period of time, he talked to me about um, one situation with some, maybe, uh, as, and he, he gave the terminology to me, but I, that's not my area, uh, but it's something to do with his nervous system. And the second issue was, um, he had mentioned he had cancer in his big toe. You remember a the approximate time of when this information was shared with you? Approximate time? Um, I, I'd have to go back and look. I don't recall the exact time. Um, the, the events that we are concerned with here in court are uh, taking place around April 11th of 2007. In proximity to that time, could you say when you were told about the nerves or the, the big toe cancer? On, on the toe cancer was prior to um, April 11th of 2007. You know how much prior? Um, I'm approximately maybe five months. Um, I, that's approximate. Maybe less. Did the defendant ever tell you anything that he ever did to treat any of these conditions? He mentioned to me he went to a Mayo Clinic. Did he say where? I believe he did, but I don't recall. Remember if it was in the state of Utah or outside? It was outside of the state. Um, do you remember the morning of April 11th of 2007? I do. And how do you remember that? Um, they had a safety fair in the building that I, my office was in. And which building is that? That's the Heather Building, which is located at the State Developmental Center. Okay. And were you attending that, that safety fair? I was in and out of the safety fair, but my office is located there, and then they have a big conference room, um, which is adjacent to my office. Did you come to interact with the defendant on that date at the safety fair? I did. Uh, could you tell us about that? Yes. Um, I was coming out of my office, and Martin McNeil came into the building, walked down the hall, and approached me. Um, he told me he needed his picture taken. Um, I asked him what for. Um, he said, I've received some type of award at the safety fair. Um, and so I directed him into the safety fair where I knew either Melissa Frost or um, Roma Henry would be able to help him. How did the defendant appear about getting his picture taken? He was adamant. Um, and you worked with him for a number of years? I worked with him for the seven years, for the, for the duration of the total of time he was with the Developmental Center. And you interacted with him as a director as well? And that is correct. Um, did his, his adamant approach, as you described it, was that how he normally acted or different than how he normally acted? It was different. He seemed determined. Um, and then did you hear at a later time about his wife passing away? Later that day I did. Did you come to interact with the defendant after his wife passed away? Um, not that day, um, but later during that week I did interact with him. Later that same week? Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about your interaction? Um, he was back to work, um, just doing his duties as normal. How did he seem to you? Um, just like Dr. McNeil. Same person. Yes. Thank you. Okay. May cross. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you recall uh, having a meeting with Investigator Robinson in this case? I did. And that was um, on August 23rd of this year? That's correct. And he asked you a number of questions, kind of like Mr. P did today? Absolutely. And, and you provided answers? I did. And, and you, you gave truthful answers? Of course. And in that meeting, um, uh, Mr. Robinson asked you about um, uh, whether you had actually seen uh, Mr. McNeil's toe, and, and you told him that you had, right? I did. 
and you told him that when you saw it, it, it did look very big and swollen. It was swollen, yes. And he also um, asked you about um, uh, he asked you a question. Uh, did he ever tell you he may have a fatal disease, a cancer, MS, or something? Do you recall that question? Um, maybe not to that that specific. Um, the comment was that he said he had cancer in his toe, and he had shared that with me. And uh, your answer to, to that question was, he never told me anything was fatal. Those were the two things related to medical that he shared with me, his toe, and you know, uh, you mentioned cancer. Yeah. He did think there was some kind of cancer with that toe. But he never right. told you that it was anything fatal, right? You know what, he mentioned cancer. I didn't make the connection whether it's fatal or whether it's treatable. Um, but he did state the, the fact that he had cancer in his big toe. All right. He never told you that he's only got X number of months to live, right? Not to my recollection. He just stated what he had. And uh, it didn't surprise you based upon your observations of his toe, correct? It was swollen. Ms. Robinson also asked you about uh, the, the meeting in the Heather building right before the safety fair, right? Correct. And uh, Ms. Robinson's question was, uh, did he seem anxious at all or when you say determined, I have, I have to get this done now or not anything like that? Do you recall that question? He asked me what his demeanor was and I told him he was determined. Um, because I was trying to ask questions of why he needed his picture taken, and he just, I need my picture taken. He was very determined to have that taken. And, and what you said to Mr. Robinson was, actually, it was just like that's what he needed to do right then. You know, he approached me and said, I need my picture taken for the safety fair for the award. That, that's what he said, right? He stated it, and I asked him why. He explained to me that he had received an award and needed his picture taken. And then you said, I just directed him to the conference room area. That is correct. That's all the questions I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else? Just a couple questions. Sure. Did you know Michelle McNeil? I knew of her. I met her maybe once. Did you attend her funeral? I did. When you interacted with him after her death, was that before her funeral or after her funeral? I believe it was before. Why did you look at the defendant's toe? He actually came to my office and showed it to me. He said he had an issue with his toe. He said it had cancer, and he actually took his sock off and his shoe and put it up on my desk and showed it to me. Did you say, can I see it? No, I did not. He volunteered that to you? He did. Thank you. Thanks. You don't have a specific recollection of him being at work between the, the day of Michelle's death and, and the day of, of the funeral, correct? I could not tell you the specific day. And so so it could have been the following week. Um, it could have been. And so if others have testified that, that he went back to work the following Monday, you wouldn't disagree with that, correct? You know, I, I wouldn't disagree with it. I would, um, I just know I saw him shortly after. Um, it's been a while ago. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Nothing further, Your Honor. Would you like Mr. Laycock to remain under his trial subpoena? We, we had better, Your Honor. Okay. You'll remain under subpoena. If you're needed back, you'll be notified to come back. Thank you, Thank you. You may step down. Your Honor, do we want to ask the jury? Oh, I'm sorry that a jury may have questions for you. Any questions? Very good. You're free to go. Thank you. Next. It calls Guy Thompson. Mr. Thompson, very good. If you'll come up here to the clerk's desk, Mr. Thompson, raise your right hand and be sworn. Please recall me swear the testimony you shall give under sanction or the court be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
Thank you. If you'll be seated here, please. Will you please state your name and spell it for the record? Guy Hale Thompson, G U Y H A L E T H O M P S O N. And how were you employed? Uh, I am the superintendent of the Utah State Developmental Center. How long have you been employed as such? Um, Ten years. And in order to be the superintendent, what kind of training and experience do you have? I have a bachelor's degree in nursing. Um, I have got uh, 10 years of background with people with intellectual disabilities, uh, working with people with handicaps. Do you know the defendant, Martin McNeil? Yes, I do. And how do you know him? Um, I worked with him as uh, the medical director, and I had the role of the director of nursing while uh, he was there. Do you see uh, Martin McNeil in the court today? Yes, I do. Do you identify him? He's right there. The dark suit and white shirt? Yes. Ask the court to have the record reflect he's identified the defendant? It will so reflect. How often did you interact with the defendant at work? On uh, a daily basis. On, uh, you have a good working relationship? Yes. You spoke with him a lot about the care of patients and such? I did. Do you remember the day of April 11th of 2007? I do. How do you remember that? Um, we had um, normally had a leadership meeting uh, with all the managers um, from the developmental center routinely on a Wednesday morning, uh, but it had been supplanted this Wednesday for a health fair that they were having uh, for all the or all the employees on campus, and I attended that health fair. Okay. Um, did the defendant? to your knowledge, attend that health fair as well? He did. When were you at the health fair? I was there between about 9 o'clock and 9.15, 9.30. Um, is that when you saw the defendant there? Yes. Are you certain of that? Yes. Did you have any interaction with him on that day? Uh, probably pleasantries, hi, how are you, as we walked around a little bit uh, uh, during the fair. Did you later hear of the defendant's wife passing away? I did. And when did you hear about that? Um, that was later that afternoon, probably 1 or 2 o'clock. Did you have the opportunity to interact with him at some point after his wife passed away? Um, not that day, uh, just at the, at the funeral later on during the week. So you attended the funeral? Yes. Did you later interact with him at work? Yes. Do you know when that was? Uh, I believe it was the following Monday. And tell us about that interaction. Uh, it was business as normal. Uh, Monday morning we started up, and uh, I was a bit surprised to see him there that soon after his wife passed away. But um, he felt that it was better for him to come back and get engaged and to get into the thing, into the process. Did he seem different to you at that point? Uh, no, it was pretty much business as usual. Prior to April 11th of 2007, prior to Michelle McNeil's passing. Um, do you remember the defendant asking around work if anyone had a room to rent? Uh, yes, I did. Can you tell us about that? Um, he was looking for a place for a friend who was a nurse to stay while she went to school to complete her education. And when you use the pronoun she, I'm presuming he said she was female. Yeah, he did. Said it was, he said it was female. He didn't use a name. Do you know if he ever was able to find a housing for this female nurse friend? Not that I'm aware of, no. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Cross. Good afternoon. Hi. I'm Randy Spencer. For how long did you interact with uh, Mr. McNeil most every day? Most every day? Uh, not an awful lot. Sometimes our paths quite, passed crossed quite a bit where we were in meetings together or we had discussions about individuals, but quite often uh, we went our own separate ways. Uh, you recall when, when he was hired in 2001? Uh, no. 
When he was hired? Yes. No, I wasn't there at that time. And when did you arrive? I came uh, in 2002. And, and you recall him being there then? Yes. In fact, he was the first person I met when I returned back to the developmental center. Okay. And, and so from that time, you, you had numerous occasions to interact with him? Numerous. And uh, you would uh, discuss the, the care of patients with him? Yes. Discuss family circumstances with him? Occasionally, yes. You got to know him fairly well? Yes. One of the closer people to to Martin at the, at the we were we were quite closely together, yes. And you had occasion to uh, to see his big toe. I did. And uh, do you recall uh, when he started having problems with his toe? It was not too much before the the death of his wife. He uh, he told us he had Charcot Marie Tooth syndrome. And uh, from what I understand, it was a neurological uh, atrophy type problem similar to MS and that it affected his toe and he had to have uh, some surgical work done on it. Okay. And uh, do you recall him having surgeries on his toe in the year prior to his wife's yes. passing? Yes, and he was using a cane at the time. Yeah. And so, so when you say not too much longer, it went back almost a year before his wife passed away. Off and on, yes, it did. You don't recall him ever telling you that he had cancer, correct? No. And he never told you that he only had so long to live or? No. From your um, experience, um, uh, Martin wasn't a, a regular attendee at in-service events such as the safety fair. Um, not all of them, no. He, he attended as about as much as politically was prudent for him to be there, but uh, no, he wasn't a, a big attender to end services. And do you remember um, having a meeting with um, Investigator Jeff Robinson on August 9th of 2013? Yes. And uh, do you remember at that meeting that he uh, asked you about uh, when uh, you saw Martin at the safety fair? Uh, I believe so, yes. Do you remember telling him that uh, it was around 10 o'clock? I don't. You may. Line Fair to say that, that when Mr. Robinson asked you what time you saw um, Martin at the safety fair, you told him around 10? I said it was like around 10 o'clock. <coughs> After Michelle passed away, you continued to have the opportunity to interact with Mr. McNeil, correct? Yes. And um, uh, there came a time when when you were asked um, by the administration to, to share your, your observations of Mr. McNeil with, with HR, correct? I believe so, yes. And uh, do you remember writing a, a letter in September of 2007? Um, I don't remember the content, but I remember writing the letter. You may. And this this was a letter that uh, was was not intended to be seen by Martin, correct? Probably not. No. And and in that letter. Uh, you indicated that his physical health has deteriorated and his mental health has declined since the passing of his wife, Michelle? Yes. That's the way you felt then? Yes. You indicated that he has developed a fine motor tremor, making it nearly impossible for him to suture a laceration? Yes. You indicated that his gait is more and more unsteady and there have been times when you were afraid he would fall? Yes. You indicated that he appears to be depressed, he withdraws from others, 
His movements are slow and deliberate, rarely shows a smile or laughs and looks sad. Yes. And, and you indicated that you've gathered this, this information from your observation from a significant amount of time spent uh, well, observing and discussing issues with him. Yes. The information you put in that letter was, was accurate to the best of your ability to? Yes, I believe it is. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor, if I may approach and. You may. Any redirect from the yes, state? Sir. surgeries or something like that yes did you observe these surgeries I didn't observe the surgeries no so how did you know he had those um, one of our um, podiatrists that routinely came to the developmental center uh, occasionally checked on his toe and said that he had done surgery on Martin's toe um, did you ever diagnose him with anything personally no I didn't make not. any determinations about his physical health other than what you observed no um, this statement um, that you saw him at the safety fair around 10 o'clock. Have you since uh, thought about that and have any thoughts on why you said that? Well, when I think around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock are not the same thing, but I know that we were over there at 9 o'clock, so that helped me pinpoint it a little closer to the time that I saw him. And that pinpoint came since the time you spoke with Detective Robinson? Yes. Okay, thank you. In relation to his big toe, you certainly didn't diagnose anything, but you, your observation was that it looked like a potato. Yes. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Any questions for this witness? Looks like we have one. Just here. We approach. The question of the jury, and you don't need to answer this because I think it's been asked to you, but who was the letter written to? And the parties have stipulated that the letter was written to Human Resources. Anything else of this witness? No, Your Honor. You may step down. It may uh, Mr. Thompson be excused from his trial subpoena? Hold on just a second, Mr. I, I Thompson. I believe so, Your Honor. Can any objection to releasing him? You're released from your subpoena as well, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, the state calls Eileen Hang. Thank you.
Could you come forward here to the clerk's desk? Please raise your right hand and be sworn. Thank you. Please be seated right here and council will ask you questions. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm okay. Uh, will you state your name and will you spell it also for the record, please? Yes. My name is Eileen Heng, and I, I spelled E-I-L-E-E-N-H-E-N-G. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, what city do you live in? I live in Salt Lake City. Uh, what's your profession? I am an attorney. Okay. Do you know the McNeil family? I do. How did you come to know them? I came to know them through uh, dating Damien McNeil. Who is Damien McNeil in relation Martin. to Martin? Uh, Martin's son. Okay. Um, and... Uh, did you get to know all the members of the family? Yes. Uh, how long did you and Damien date? We dated uh, for a little under than two years. Okay, and when did that begin and when did that end? We started dating spring of 2006 and then we broke up in February 2008. Okay, so you were with Damien when his mother died? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Your, your interactions with, uh, with Martin in particular um, bef during your courtship with Damien, um, were they frequent? Uh, yes, they were pretty frequent. How would you describe those generally? Occasionally we would, uh, we would have Sunday dinners. Sometimes it was weekly, uh, monthly, uh, so it was pretty frequent. Okay, did you take trips with the family? I did uh, a couple of trips, yes. Okay, is it fair to say you got fairly close with the rest of the McNeils? Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember um, April, or excuse me, April 11th, 2007? I do. Um, where were you that morning? I was at school at BYU, and I was just in classes at that time. Okay, is this during your undergraduate degree or your law degree? During my undergrad degree. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me back up for a minute. Uh, um, actually, no, I'm sorry. Were you informed that Michelle died that day? I was. How did that happen? Um, that morning when I was in class, I received a lot of missed calls and voicemails, and when I got out of class, I checked, and uh, Damien had left me a few messages. So uh, I called him back immediately after, and that's when he informed me. Okay, and what did you do after you learned of that? I left campus, and I went to the McNeil's house. Um, did you meet with any, uh, did you meet with any uh, members of the family that day? Yes. Who, who was at the house? Initially, when I first arrived, it was Damien and Martin. Uh, they were the only ones at the house, and eventually... Alexis came, and Rachel came as well. Any others? Um, there were the younger girls. I think they were there that night as well. Okay. Do you recall about what time you arrived at the McNeil home? Um, a pro in the afternoon, early afternoon, so a little at, like around 1. Okay. Uh, and is that an exact time or is that an estimate? I knew it was sometime after 1. So one to two is kind of my okay. estimate. And how do you know that? Because my class uh, it ended around 12. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when you arrived, uh, first arrived at the house, what happened? Uh, Martin and Damien were sitting in the living room. So when you enter the house... Uh, the living room is just kind of um, in the front door is just at the front, and then the living room is just in front of the front door. Not in the front, just the direct um, um, in front of the, the house, essentially. So, so when you step in the front door, the living room is in front of you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they were sitting in there, and then I approached them, and um, 
Like I hugged Damien and I hugged Martin and um, I asked Martin and Damien what I could do for them. Okay. Um, did Martin say anything at that point? Um, he, we went into the master bedroom and we sat down um, in, like there's a little nook where there's a TV, so we sat down in that area and just kind of sat there for a little bit, a couple of minutes. Okay. Did Martin say why you were going back? Why, why? Well, let me ask. When you say we, who, who's involved? Martin, Damien, and I. Did Martin say why you were going back to the bedroom? Um, I don't recall specifically why, but he was, we were just like, let's go to the, the bedroom. Okay. Um, and when you got back there, what happened? Uh, I asked again, like, what can I do for you? And this was directed to Martin. And he asked me to retrieve uh, the pres Michelle's pres prescription drugs uh, from the bathroom. Okay. Do you remember exactly where they were? They were um, near the toilet. Okay. And do you, were they uh, loose or were they in a container? Or how, how? They were in a little plastic container. Do you remember the color of that container? I recall white, but I'm not completely sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how long had you been at the McNeil home before this happened? Uh, no longer than 10, 15 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> so when you, uh, when you retrieved the medications, what did Martin ask next? He wanted Damien and I to um, open each bottle of the prescription drugs and to make a count of which drugs had how many quantities of pills in them. Or do you recall how many pill bottles there were? I do not recall. I, not specifically. I know that it ranged from five to ten bottles. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and did you and Damien do that? Yes. Um, was Martin still present when you were doing that? Yes. Uh, do, you know, do you recall who was doing the counting? I believe... Um, Damien was counting, um, either, sorry, um, Martin was counting and Damien was writing the, the drugs down, the drugs and the quantities of the pills down. Okay, so Damien's making a list yes. of each drug and each quantity. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, do you re did you ever know what the medications that you were counting were? What? I did not. Okay. Uh, do you remember how many were counted? I do not remember. What, what was your role in this? Did you watch it or were you opening or what were you doing? I watched it mainly. I brought the pills to the table and then um, they started counting and writing down. Did Martin say why he wanted to count the pills? Martin had mentioned something like how Michelle, um, he wanted to know how she died. She wasn't taking her prescription drugs and he wanted to see if there was something missing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Did he ever say anything, anything about whether something, in fact, was missing? No. Um, did he ever say anything, any, any, did he ever make any remarks about whether he had solved that question in his head by counting the pills with you? He did say something along the lines that she was, Michelle was not taking her pills. Um, she had high blood pressure or high cholesterol. She wasn't taking her pills. He, that's something that he repeated a few times. Okay. Do you happen to remember what the drugs looked like, what color or shape or anything? There were some white pills, and I believe there are also some blue pills. Okay. Um, now, does that mean that there were only two types of drugs that you were counting out? There are multiple types okay. of drugs. Mm -hmm. there, some were white and others were blue. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were more than two, is that correct? Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. Do you know what uh, happened to that list? I do not. It was on a little white pad of paper. paper. Um, I think it was just left on the table somewhere. All right. Um, when, uh, about how long would you say it took you, uh, well, it took Damien Martin to, to count out these pills? Probably no longer than five minutes. All right. <clears throat> um, after the count was done, what happened? Uh, Martin was seemed frustrated, and he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then he asked me to flush the pills down the toilet. Um, and uh, did you know what, uh, what Martin did for a living? 
I, yes. What, what was that? Uh, a doctor and also an attorney. Okay. Did he actually practice law, or, or how do you know about the attorney? Um, I knew that he went to law school, and um, Damien told me that he was a lawyer. Okay. I don't think, I had never heard anything about him practicing law or anything like that. Okay. Uh, but he asked you to flush the pills down the toilet? Yes. Uh, and did you do that? Yes. Did that request seem strange to you? At the time, I, it did seem strange, yes. Why did you comply with uh, that request? Because he asked me to, and he just lost his wife, and I wanted to help. Okay. How many flushes did it take to get the pills gone? Just one. Um, do you remember, did you, how were the pills taken to the, to the toilet? Were they in handfuls? Were they scooped into something? Do you remember? I recall the, the pills were all separated out by that time. So I believe that they were in the plastic container. So I just dumped the plastic container, um, the pills in the plastic container into the toilet. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then you flushed it? Yes. Do you know what happened to the pill bottles? I know that they were discarded. I, don't, I, I believe they were, we just put them in the garbage. Okay. We being whom? Um, Dave. I believe that I just threw it in the garbage, sorry, not we. Okay, so you think you threw the pill bottles in the garbage? Yes. That's your memory? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, was that in conjunction with Martin's request to get rid of the prescriptions? Yes. Was, um, you said this was done pretty much right after you arrived, is that correct? Correct. Was Alexis there? Not at that time, no. So at this time, it's, it's you, Damien, and Martin alone in the home. Is that right? Yes. Um, do you know about how, long, how much later Alexis arrived? She, um, I knew that she was on her way. She was in Las Vegas at the time, so she was flying to Utah. So a couple of hours, maybe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> were the pills gone before Alexis arrived? Yes. What happened next? Um... Martin asked me to just kind of organize the master bedroom, so I kind of, there were some table there were some papers on the the table, and I just kind of rearranged it. I remember there were some travel catalogs, and I just made it more tidy. Okay. Did you throw anything away? No. Um, <clears throat> did you see a hospital bed in yes. the master suite? Yes, I did. Um, what condition was it in? It was made. It was clean. Um, didn't look like anybody had been in it recently. Okay. Um, uh, do you know what happened to that bed? Um, Martin didn't want to see it, so I believe it was removed um, um, shortly after Michelle's passing. Did you see its actual removal? I did not. Um, how do you know that it was removed? Because the next time um, I went into the room, it was gone. Do you remember when the next time was? It I visited the house pretty frequently, I think every day that week, so it must have been um, a couple of days after Michelle's passing. Okay. Um, did you help clean up the master suite at all? Well, you've already kind of said you've tidied up um, and that Martin asked you to do that. Is that correct? Yes. Um, let me ask you, to, did Martin ever explain the, um, what had happened that morning to you? He had said that... Um, he had found Michelle in the bathtub or in the bathroom. There was blood everywhere. Uh, he had described that he had just picked up Ada from school, and um, Ada went into the bathroom and then um, was shocked, and then Martin came in and then saw what happened and told Ada to, to get out and get help. And, um, Mich yeah, just Michelle was in the bathroom. So he said there was blood everywhere? Yes. Did he say why he thought there might be blood everywhere? Um, he suspected that Michelle had fell and hit her head maybe on the bathtub. Okay. Um, when you were in the master suite, in the ba did you enter the bathroom? Yes. Did you see blood everywhere consistent with what he had said? I did not. How soon? In, in your estimation, is this is about sometime after 1 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> did you make any other observations while you were 
moving about in the uh, master bedroom or the master bathroom? I noticed that the carpet was wet and I saw um, some blood stains on the carpet. Okay. How did you notice that the carpet was wet? I was, uh, I wore flip-flops, so I was barefoot at that time, and I just stepped into it and it was wet. Okay. Do you recall about how big the wet spot was? Uh, I do not. Um, I just stepped in it and I didn't really, I didn't notice didn't how big it, it was, yeah. Did you, um, and this is, I realize it was quite, a time, quite some time ago, but um, was your whole foot in a wet spot? Was it part of your foot? I recall um, my, the ball of my feet and upwards. I stepped into a wet spot from the ball of my feet and upwards. Okay. Uh, may I approach your honor? You may. I'm showing you what's uh, been marked as States Exhibit 25. Um, Is that, um, and actually, Your Honor, if we could, uh, it's I published to the jury already, but if we could. Go ahead. Could you just. When you stepped into the wet spot, did you, you said you saw some blood in it as well. Uh, did it look somewhat like this? It was, no, it did not look like that. It did not. What, will you describe it? Um. It, the blood stain that, that I saw? Yeah, just what you saw about the sweat spot and the blood. I, I noticed that it was really dark. It was just the, it was a blood, um, it seemed like it was just a big blood spot, splatter. So, How big? Um, it was roughly like that big. So I don't know in context like how big this is. There sure. Is no... um, okay, that's fine. We can move on. Make a record of what she's demonstrated. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, for the record, the motion that you're making with your hand about the size of the blood is uh, you put your index finger and your thumb kind of together, maybe about the size of a half dollar, quarter? Yes. Okay. Sorry, Your Honor, if we get clarification, was it a half dollar size or quarter size? Yep. Agreed. How big was it? Um, like um, a dollar size. A dollar size. Okay. Can you bring the lights up? Did you do anything else to help clean up in the in the in the master bedroom? You said you just tidied some papers. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, was it a was it a mess? No, it wasn't. By that time, did you notice any? <clears throat> excuse me. Did you notice any clothing or anything on the floor? No. Um, did you ever pick up any clothing? No. Were you present with the McNeil family uh, in the time during af uh, after Michelle died? Yes. What did you observe regarding the, the family's unity? Um, I, could, I saw that there was a lot of contention between Martin and Alexis. Um, did you witness any of that contention firsthand? I did. Um, what was the subject matter of that contention? It was regarding hearsay. Uh, sustained. I think the question calls for to relate what others have said. Okay. During those disagreements, um, did you ever hear um, Martin make any statements? Regarding. Regarding the disagreement. If you. Objection. Foundation. Yeah, sustained. If you could. Establish when and where. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we've been kind of talking in generalities about a lot of disagreements. Uh, do you have any specific ones that come to mind that you recall? Yes. Like I mentioned, there was the custody yeah, of the. Can you approach your honor on this? Do you have an objection? What's your objection? Yeah, I, just, I agree that I'd like to approach as well, Your Honor. Okay. Very good.
We've got about an hour left in the day. I'd like to take 10 minutes, uh, allow you to use the restroom, stretch your legs. Uh, don't form or express any opinions. Don't have any conversations amongst yourselves or anyone else. Do no research on your own using a computer or something else and avoid any uh, media coverage of the trial. Court's in recess. Thank you. You may step down and take a break as well. Do we need to have any further discussion, make a record, or are we okay? I think we're okay. We have an agreement. Yeah, I think we know where we're going. Okay. If you'll instruct your witness accordingly. Court's in recess.